Continuing on, one of the common tasks that you'll often face when working between a local and a remote system is transferring files between them. For this, the scp command is extremely useful and provides a counterpart to the local cp copy command. It's short for secure copy and is used to either move files from your local machine, oftentimes your laptop to a remote machine, in this case the CC Lab stuff, or vice versa, uh, to get some files that you have on a remote machine like CC Labs Apollo and copy them over here uh, to your local machine. We saw that this was used as a sort of fallback to copy uh, the ID uh, RSA pub file from one place to the next, uh, but it's quite a bit more flexible than that. The basics of the command are scp uh, for what you want to copy and uh, the file that you want to copy if it's local uh, to, along with the remote address where you want to copy it to that involves first your username on that system, the machine name itself, and importantly a colon at the end. And we'll have more to say about that in a second. I'm going to jump over to a terminal here. And at first we'll just need a file uh, to copy around. So I'll fire up nano and create a full file like hi mom and hi dad. Uh, if I save that by pressing control S and I'll just call it myfile.txt and exit here. Uh, if I cat out that myfile.txt, you can see its common uh, contents are uh, hi mom and hi dad. Importantly, uh, if you're not aware, CP is the copy command in Unix. Uh, so uh, that's why SCP is named as such, the secure copy. I could, for instance, do a local copy of myfile.txt to otherfile.txt. Uh, if I cat out other file now, uh, then it's got the same contents. Copy is flexible in its own right, but it's only for moving uh, files and making copies of things on a local machine. Instead, what we want to do is get this myfile uh, to a remote machine, so I'll punch in an SCP. The file I want to move around is called myfile.txt. And then my name on the CSC lab system is Kaufman, my X500. And then the remainder of this will be the machine name, apollo.cseLabs.umn.edu, and a colon. Now, uh, the colon is important because, again, it distinguishes that this is a remote machine and a location that I want to copy it to there. If you fail to have the colon on, then this will simply make a copy that's local uh, called Kaufman at Apollo at CSLabGMAU. It's a very strange looking uh, sort of file in that respect because it has an at sign and a bunch of dots in it and so forth. So don't forget the colon and the default location on the remote machine is going to be my home directory. Now you notice in a second as I punch enter uh, that there will be no prompt for a password and that's because I completed the first portion of this little video tutorial where I set up that key based authentication uh, alleviating the need to punch passwords in, and so forth. If you haven't done that yet then you'll likely be prompted for your password on attempting to copy something along with a dual authentication. But since we've already done that this SCPing process will feel a lot faster and a lot like moving files around locally in that regard. So I'll punch enter now, and after a moment of negotiating, of verifying using the public key on the remote machine against the private key on my local machine, uh, this file is going to head over to uh, Atlas. I think it'd be wise at this point just to verify that it's over there. Uh, so I'm going to split the screen, fire up another terminal over here, and jump over to Atlas. And of course, since I already set up a uh, Oh, sorry, Apollo rather than Atlas. And of course, since I set up that uh, key-based authentication, I don't need to punch my password in, I'm just in at Atlas. And if I do an LS here, uh, I might have to scroll around a little bit. Uh, da -da -da. Of course, way up here at top here is myfile.txt. Uh, and if I cat its contents out, myfile.txt, there's hi mom and hi dad. Just bear in mind that there are two separate copies of this same named file now, one on my local laptop and one on this remote machine over here, uh, CSA Labs Apollo. This is important if you're working on, for instance, some sort of a class project, uh, because as I would make changes to my local file, for instance, I fire up myfile.txt uh, and add in hi sis and hi bro. I'll save that and exit cat out its contents, yep, they're all there. 
the remote file is in no way connected to this thing. So I cat that out and it still just reads as the old version. You make updates to local source files on your system and want to test them on CAC Labs, you'll have to recopy them over there. However, with SCP and this key-based authentication, it's as easy as scrolling back, punching enter, uh, to copy the new contents over, and voila, we've uh, more or less synchronized there. Uh, SCP is useful in several other respects in that you don't need to necessarily transfer just a single file over here, you can transfer a whole project directory. So for instance, uh, let us create a, such a directory, uh, directory my project, uh, and I'll, uh, let's see, change into that my project directory, and I'll just uh, make some files. So here's, maybe I'll move that uh, file that was up there, my file.txt in here. Uh, and I'll also touch a file called the file.txt, echo something like hello uh, into hello.txt, uh, and maybe finally echo a sequence like 1 to 10 uh, into numbers.dat. So if I list in here now, I've got several files uh, in here of varying sizes. And if this comprises some project that I want to get over to CSE Labs, um, then uh, SCP is useful for it. A good copy of things one at a time, uh, that's awfully painful. So let me change back up into my home directory, where I list out that my project directory, it's there. And the command is simply going to be an SCP again. But this time, if I want to transfer a whole directory, it'll be the dash R recursive uh, option. And if I have a deeply nested uh, directory tree there uh, under my project, this will work. But for now, I don't. It's just a, a sort of simple flat directory in that respect. Everything else is the same. Uh, so Kaufman at uh, apollo.cseelabs.yeoman.edu with the colon. I punch that in. Uh, key-based authentication you know, gets me in, and I list my project now. Uh, voila, all the stuff is in there. If I cat out my project numbers.dat, uh, we're good to go. So there's really no trouble at all uh, to get whole directory trees on your local laptop over to where the um, CC Labs is at. Uh, finally then, if I, for instance, make some changes over here on CC Labs, uh, for instance, come into my project, uh, and I even named hello dot wrong there. Oh, let's add a couple files, like uh, I'll echo goodbye uh, into goodbye.txt, and uh, let's see, do a sequence of uh, 50 to 60 into more nums.txt. Uh, so we've got some more stuff up here. And just for posterity, let's uh, change the name of this uh, to uh, my project, uh, let's say V2. Uh, so this will be distinguished and making things just a little bit easier. So now I've got some stuff on CC Labs that I wanna get onto my local machine. Uh, from my laptop here, um, it's just an inversion of what we did a moment ago. Uh, so SCP. It's a whole directory I want to grab, so uh, recursive again. But I'll start this time as where I want to copy from is uh, the remote machine. So it'll be coffin at Apollo apollo.cclabs.umn.edu. And I maybe make this one a little bit bigger so that I can see here. Uh, and the directory I'm going to fish out is my project uh, v2. Uh, the location that I want to copy it to is my home directory on the local machine, which is abbreviated dot. Uh, you can also put it in subdirectories. Uh, for instance, if I have a CSI 2021 directory here, uh, then I could say, oh, move it into dot slash CSI 2021 or something like that. Anyway, I just want to move it into uh, my present directory. So I'll do an SCP. And note, this is just the, um, the source and the destination, remote machine and local machine. Uh, I've got here the colon to indicate it's the remote machine with the home directory and then the name of the file there. Um, and as I punch enter, this will take a couple of moments, but uh, the transfer will complete. And if I now list here my project v2, I've got all the goodies over there. Bear in mind, again, the same goes that any changes you'd make locally now in this are not synchronized in any way uh, with the remote machine. 
but uh, there are actually more advanced tools, uh, namely rsync, that enable you to do that sort of thing. If you're curious about those, I encourage you to explore on your own, but by and by, I get uh, on just fine with a lot of SCPs. There's one other uh, tool to make use of, but I'll take a brief break and get back to you to talk about SSH as a file system.